Harry Krishna, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition or episode of the Harry Krishna Project podcast. This is episode number 92. A big thank you to everyone who continues to tune in from all over the world. Whether you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, it's great to have you with us. If you are watching it on YouTube, please do not forget to hit that all important subscribe button so you keep updated about future podcasts and video updates from the Harry Krishna Project. And if you're watching this on Facebook, please do not forget to like or follow the Harry Krishna Project Facebook page. You're also kept updated about future podcasts and video productions from the Harry Krishna Project um, that way as well. And also, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who always sends feedback after every podcast. I, I, I don't always respond, or I can't always respond to all the messages, but I particularly appreciate all the feedback. I'm absolutely delighted to welcome our 92nd guest uh, this week. A, a big welcome to um, Morali Dara Prabhu. Harry Krishna, Krishna Prabhu. How are you? I'm fine, Prabhu. Thank you very great, much. Great, great. It's great to have you with us. Um, okay. Um, in a minute, we'll, well, you'll reveal, you'll reveal everything you want to about yourself. Uh, so let's start with the first question. Please tell us a bit about you and where you're from. Yeah, so I, I've been born in a very insignificant village in Germany. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's called Matzen. Um, yeah, I, I would, I was, um, interested into spiritual life when I turned when I and I was around 18 I was really concerned with uh, the topic of death what happens you know what is life's purpose what is um I, I would say I would say it was not just a superficial question but a real concern I had because the way uh, I worked you know I, I I I'm a learned baker this was my profession and uh then I have in that time I have been working in a factory in a food factory, and uh, I tell you factory work, um, you are you becoming worse than a donkey. Like you becoming um, sometimes the scriptures uh, they point this out that a man who just works very hard for you know little gain he has no at the end of the day he has made no profit. Uh, he has wasted his valuable form of life, and I. You know, everyone tells you this is life. This is how it is. This is reality. You have to work very hard. And you know, um, I was not. Uh, I was thinking if I just work like this for the rest of my life, and then at the end I just die. What was it all for? So very, very intense uh, search became. Um, I was also quite depressed. Actually, I contemplated suicide for some time but my family they were very nice to me my parents especially uh they uh um they understood my problems i went through uh the heavy drug abuse where i tried out almost every kind of you know what i tried heroin i tried lsd i tried dmt um i smoked marijuana for for many many years and um I, I would I would say that through some experience I had, I was at least thinking there's more to life than what you can see with your eyes and what you can you know uh, hear with your ears. And I wanted to become a monk because I thought, you know, if drugs can get me this high, if drugs can give me some sort of realization, uh, there was some inert desire in me to go to the forest and meditate, you know, become a monk. So I wanted to become a monk very much to find answers to my questions. I was born in a um, Christian family uh, and, you know, the Christian teachings, they leave a lot of uh, gaps in in their conclusion, in their logic, in their approachability to uh, who is Jesus, who is God, what is my relationship with him. Uh, to begin with, I was atheistic. Actually, I was really fed up with God because religious people, uh, specifically the Catholic Church, with the recent years of um, unfolded crimes that have been happened repeatedly, uh, there was just not much faith that uh, there's any truth to it because, uh, you know, science and um, uh, 
uh, yeah, you know, not following their own restrictions. That is just not really, you know, helpful um, to develop faith in that tradition. So I was, I thought I was very puffed up atheist, but I believed in uh, liberation, you know, nirvana. Uh, just cease all the misery because he stopped incarnating again and again. Uh, and to my surprise, my sister, she was, she knew one of these Hare Krishna um, devotees. Actually, she she was, uh, it was her best friend. And uh, she got a bit upset with him because he went all crazy about Hare Krishna and just left off, you know. She couldn't understand and I remember um, she and uh, her boyfriend at the time, they were sitting in the kitchen and weren't joking. Oh, the, you know, the uh, uh, Simon, he has he has joined this uh, this cult. They do, they're just chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. And he, he chanted the full Maha Mantra to make a joke, you know, to, to laugh. And ah, he was laughing and saying, oh, maybe that just works, you know, maybe that's just what... what uh, uh, he he didn't you know keep going. He actually also got a little bit discouraged because when he visited the manor and he was a vegan, he they had they could not provide any vegan food for him. He had to cook himself, you know, uh, while being guest in the manor, and that was a very bad experience for him. So um, I realized from that mistake that uh, you know uh, you have to give attention to everyone, whatever their needs are, you know. Uh, other otherwise uh, you cannot really welcome them however um um when i um yeah my, my sister she got me connected with that monk uh, we had a talk and uh, i was very interested in their philosophy um i first read bhagavad gita but it wasn't the gita from Prabhupada. it was a gita that was actually um um impersonal uh from an impersonal viewpoint, but even that Gita, from an impersonal viewpoint, made more sense than everything else I have read so far from uh, Buddhism, from uh, Christianity, from uh, Islam, which I have studied a little bit, you know. Um, and then when I read God Prabhupada's Gita, um, I read it in in one week, and afterwards I was I was sad. It was finished already. It was like, wow, this is amazing. Is there anything more? And fortunately, there was more. You know, there's the Shima, there was the Shima Bhagavatam. and I immediately started reading. And it was Jaitanya Charitamrita. In a year or so, I got through Shima Bhagavatam, Jaitanya Charitamrita. I read it. I read it once, and um, it was. Uh, yeah, like finding a treasure and um, so many questions that were unanswerable before, inconceivable before. They now allowed me to have a theistic uh, worldview and stop hating God and blaming him for my misery. And uh, that was a very nice experience. Can we talk a bit about, um, you, you mentioned about... Um taking drugs, being addicted to drugs. This was when you were a teenager, before you were 18. I, I actually, um, I hated drugs for the most part of my life. Um, with 13, I was very lonely. I had my, my best friend, he had moved away. And um, I had no connections. So the only way to connect with people was actually to go to my local village uh, area and and get drunk you know a, a, and drink beer and uh, I was drunken like two or three times in my life and I vomited like anything and I, I hated it I was thinking how can people enjoy themselves like this but there was no other intelligent you know conversation possible I didn't mm. know anyone but um my my uh, i hope uh, he's not angry that i rat him out now but my brother uh, and my sister they were uh, a little bit into smoking uh, marijuana and then i was um, asking them i was sort of i think at this time i was taking shelter of them because they were quite established in life they were uh, going to university um and uh, they were very, you know, happy, satisfied. They had no serious issues. And so I was asking them, um, maybe we can hang out, you know. Uh, and then we did. Um, and <clears throat> from, I think I was I was in uh, in my apprenticeship as, as baker at that time. So 
This uh, was just this was just at the age of 13, was it? Or a bit older you were? I was uh, when I started apprenticeship, I started with 14 and the, I think the first year mm. I was uh for myself uh, with with uh, 15, I think I smoked the first time and with 16 it became a habit. It it mm. was a more regular thing. Uh and yeah, they had actually friends which were very intellectually uh, um, qualified, you know, uh, philosophical even, mm, mm. and they they uh, they knew a lot of more uh, things than just marijuana. My brother and sister not so much. They were actually always uh, a bit afraid, you know, that they introduced me to drugs and now I'm going crazy with it. You know, it was not it was not their fault, um, even though they introduced me. Uh, to it so i i actually went <clears throat> through a time where uh, they thought they may lose me because i was completely irresponsible and i was uh uh you know having no limits basically just just seeing how it goes and in terms of your 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 parents if you don't mind me asking i mean um you mentioned that you had like a christian upbringing um how was that I mean, do you did you have a good relationship with your parents? Do you still have a relationship with them now? Mm -hmm. very, very good, actually. They are very supportive of the whole thing. Um, in the beginning, of course, um, especially my father was afraid because if you choose a life as monk, you don't have any insurances. You don't build up any capital. You don't, uh, you, you know, uh, your your pension. How, what will you do when you are in old age? These are all realistic um, fears parents have. And I think uh, we as sons, daughters, owe also a little bit um, to response to that concern mm -hmm. uh, by pacifying them, showing them uh, that we actually have a society that takes care of people and we are not, you know, just living a dream in that sense we stand with bo both feet in the in reality and know what's going on uh, at that time when i joined with uh, 19 years i was i, I didn't care about it. I, I was telling them you know if that doesn't work my life is finished i commit suicide and so they uh uh they were actually happy first of all that uh, Hare krishna saved my life uh and uh you know uh took me out of this serious problems with drugs I had. Mm. Uh, so they took, they, 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 they could not but take it positively because otherwise they would have lost a son. And now I can explain to them, mm. you know, nothing has changed. My only, uh, I only find purpose in my life now because I understand so mm. many questions that I could not have answered before. And I'm sorry, but this material world is not making me enthusiastic that I find my happiness here because I know in the end there is there is death and if I don't have an answer for for death why do I live in first place it is something only a human being can ask because mm. animals they don't have such concerns you know they they don't also have the luxury because we're living in a world where one living being eats another for survival and it's reality you know one living the human being the soul that is now having a human body is is really something difficult to understand to understand god in this way why is this world like this created and um you know uh i think everyone has doubts i mean of course everyone has doubts because krishna says with 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 doubts you cannot progress on this path because you have to follow so many things that you would never follow voluntarily mm. uh to attain enlightenment that uh yeah so um when we first met um we were just discussing this before we started the podcast it was we think 2016 we first mm -hmm. met which was uh, seven years ago mm -hmm. uh you were living at bhaktivedanta manor um yes. uh you were living in the 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 ashram there um how did you get I say, how did you get there? I don't mean which flight did you take. I mean, we, from from joining this the Krishna Consciousness Movement at the age of nineteen to living living at Bhaktivedanta Manor in twenty sixteen. How did that? How did that ha happen? That narrative. Tell us a bit about that. So um, yes, when I 
when I was around 18 and um, I had I had some experiences, I would I would say that uh, made me believe that, you know, instead of taking so many drugs, I should just, you know, find my own my my, my own power uh, by meditation. So I didn't really care what monk I gonna be. I just wanted to um, also a little bit, you know, escape the industry that, you know, for uh, the the um, labor uh, sl slavery in my eyes, uh, it's not normal work anymore. You you ba basically machine that has to fit in a part, and and this I really wanted to escape. I didn't care where, and my sister she knew this Hare Krishna monk Simon was his name at this time. Um, he was from the Bhaktivedanta Mena, so we started. Uh, a Zoom. I think I think I met Simon the same time I met you. Yeah. Yeah, he's now yeah. initiated. He's now initiated. So, um, uh, yeah, he he, he, yeah. Gave, he gave me the recommendation: come, come to Bhaktivedanta Mena, <laughs> come to us, get the real training right here. Because I was thinking, yeah, you know, England, why, why there? But it was a very good choice. I joined the Bhaktivedanta Mena then, two thousand, um, yeah, two thousand sixteen. I think it was February. I did the. Bhakti Shastri, they just threw me in. I was it was already going on for a month, you know, but uh, they said they said quickly come in, you know, it's very good basis for your spiritual life. So I did it, and then I did the Veda course. It was another three months, and after spending six months in the uh, guest house there, I moved to the ashram. Um, I was very inspired uh, by Krishna consciousness, also very inspired by the Bhakti Danta Mena. I could um, use my occupation. I was in a bakery and I I, I baked, helped baking bread. The devotees used to like my cross songs uh, that I made there. So it was uh, it was a very nice introduction in Krishna conscious life. Wow, I I I remember you being there and we had lots of conversations, but I wasn't aware that you were baking bread in the bakery. <laughs> um yeah i love that and then um we then bumped into each other it's like a little story isn't it we then bumped into each other in 2019 uh because i hadn't kind of seen you for a while you kind of disappeared you know and then i saw you in i bumped into you in 2019 i was visiting radhadesh in the summer mm. and then you just appeared i mean you know i hadn't seen you for a few years and then so, so you were staying at radhadesh for a while how did that happen for you yeah so um I, I left the uh, Bhaktivedanta Mena. Um, there were a few reasons for it. Some were uh, I internal, some were external. Uh, one reason was a friend of mine. He ended up on the street in, in London. Um, he lost the shelter of devotees because he um, smoked marijuana. It was, uh, yeah, they kicked him out, you know, a natural consequence. And... Uh, First, I just supported him uh, with uh, giving him prashadam, having talks. And um, in that time, I also fell weakness to my old habit. And um, we ended up smoking together. And it, it went on for a while, um, unnoticed. But I was thinking that I cannot live like this, you know, being in the ashram and not being able to uphold the regulative principles. So... Um, for his better and my better because he didn't know what to do next he, he he had no money he had no perspective so i took him to germany i went myself i was believing that um besides of course my own weakness that i have to uh, had to work on um i i felt that the ashram was it was very nicely managed everything was running but uh, there was a little I, in the ashram i was missing a little familiarity you know some being in a family being like mm. having time for each other having time to talk even like f our our philosophy our you know krishna says that this process becomes joyful because uh we converse and enlighten each other about about him and this was it was more about service sadhana uh sleep at the right time you know prabhu i'm sorry i'm too busy i have to do this and this and this and this I thought maybe if I joined an ashram that was a bit smaller, um, there would be a little bit more of this, you know, at atmosphere. So I was trying my best in in Germany, in Golokadam. I stayed for half a year. Didn't work there either. I was uh, 
not um yeah i had the same i had the same struggle uh also i suffered um heavy heavy nightmares i i went through a very bad time actually i think i think i i also um went to a past life regression in um uh in london uh you know what what's his name um jayadev prabhu he made uh that answered a lot of questions for me because when i joined krishna consciousness after a few months i i started to get very very uh brutal nightmares of being tortured of being chased um by by the government and uh killed for preaching you know you might think it's it, uh it's like you know uh you have it you have it here somewhere you know it's just the drugs or something but from a past life regression i found out i actually was killed in a previous life for wow. preaching and uh it the fear is real the fear is very much there they kill preachers in uh this age and in other ages in kali yuga especially and um uh, the whole past life regression made a lot of sense to me that you know that's not something that you can uh just say to anyone and he will believe you and he will understand what you're going through uh that's unfortunately not the case but at least i could understand myself and um help going through that fear and working on it working on not just my attachments but real conditionings that keep me you know um smoking ganja is really effective to kill dreams to kill nightmares so uh, it was some sort of self medication at that point uh still um i had i i opened myself up to the temple management that i have this problem um krishna somehow always arranged it i was never caught you know which i also think is really his protection because mm. i had no evil intentions i was simply i'm i was simply struggling um he didn't took it well he kicked me out he gave me one week to leave um told me he cannot help me in my with my problem and um um yeah so that was that then i i i was home for a bit and i was really frustrated because krishna consciousness at uh was the only thing that really made sense to me and i really wanted to live um um well in a community that practice seriously that that you know make service to god their prime goal in life because it's very beautiful it's a very nice thing uh and it's it's good for me it's good for others but um i got a call you know i was actually doing rt for my deities and i was for two months doing rt every day i was chanting all my rounds i was even observing because of the shock um uh, I, i was very strictly renouncing my uh, previous attachment and after two months i just told to my deities you know this is the last rt today i i just can't do it anymore i i i don't feel the support i don't feel the uh, i don't i don't feel like this has any use So and midway through the RT I got a I got a call from a devotee. He says, "Hare Krishna Prabhu, how are you?" And I told him, "Oh, uh nice to hear from you." And so this devotee he, he told me, "Oh, I heard what happened to you and uh I want to ask maybe you want to join a uh, Zurich temple or uh Simhachalam. They have a, a bhakta program going there now maybe that's something for you." And I was thinking, "Yeah, maybe that's something for me." So then I rejoined uh in in Zurich temple i stayed there for wow. one and a half year in in switzerland switzerland yeah yes. yeah yes wow i i've never been to switzerland but i i always imagine it's beautiful it's quite a nice country <laughs> it, it is it is actually very i mean you, you know they have this famous swiss retreat uh, mm. with such an amaraj my guru much also used to go there uh regularly um it's a very beautiful country it's very clean um they have a very productive attitude which is actually something your pro part uh mm. looked upon very favorably when he visited uh, switzerland uh, i think he visited one or two times in zurich 
I, uh, I was I was thinking it would be clean. I, I I kind of in my head compare it to Monaco and Luxembourg. It's not as small as those countries, but it's kind of small and well oiled, you know, mm. financially. Yes, um, yes. Got a rich country. Yeah, yeah. It's also very expensive to live there. Mm. You know, the, for a brown, the temple had to pay whooping three hundred fifty Swiss francs for to cover the health insurance. You know, brahmacharis are very expensive there. Uh, which was also, uh, um, I was there with, um, uh, at this time, uh, uh, they were twins, uh, Sugi and Suri were, were their name. Uh, we were all in the ashram. We uh, also um, got an insurance. It was actually not, you know, for half a year or so I went without insurance and did something. For example, my parents, uh, they get crazy about what was happened if something happens to you, you know, if you are in a hospital and then there's a bill from 10,000 euro, who will pay that? And <laughs> yeah, these are real, these are realistic concerns. You know, I cannot just dismiss it and say, oh, don't worry. Don't, don't worry. Mom, dad, Krishna protects me. You know, it's, uh, you can say that, but there have been cases where people have not been insured and, you know, got, um, hurt themselves and uh, temple cannot afford to pay for such huge bills mm. you know it just even one story i heard which was uh from a from a sannyas um who went through cancer and he spent 20 years of his life distributing books he made so much money for the temple they told him sorry we cannot help you you have to go out and work and then while um having to treat in going to having to undergo active cancer treatment he had to collect the money that uh, he could not you know collect because he had a full-time engagement in temple i was looking at him and saying maharaj why did you stay How, why was that not the point where you say 20 years of my life i have given i have made so much money and now when i really need it they don't catch me up but he was smiling and saying krishna you know like it was not something between him and iskon it was something between him and krishna so that was, uh, this earned my respect, this earned my, um, my yeah, I, he became worshipable at this moment to me because he really did it for Krishna, not for recognition, not for, you know, a pat on the, on the shoulder, not even for something that I think every member of our movement should be, um, yeah, should be part of social uh, protection that is in cultured, countries you know a, a must because you know if you have if you are sick if you hurt yourself these um builds they they will for the rest of your life you will have to work for them if you're not insured you know mm. so that's something that also oh because uh he was a maharaj he was a sannyas um very um it opened my eyes a little bit to see that okay you know i felt sometimes a little neglected mistreated but this is a different level and still he carried on you know that is impressive mm. so i th i think we were we were kind of getting to how you ended up at radadesh you, you've talked about zurich mm -hmm. you were at zurich for a year and a half and then you 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 something happened that finally took you to radadesh yeah um, how, how did that happen that that um i was actually thinking about getting work in uh, in Zurich because uh, I also um, maybe it was also due to not having really a service that suits me you know I, I was I think as brahmachari in in many places you are simply uh, the man that does the things that needs to be done you know <laughs> washing pots cleaning. <clears throat> And these things are uh, by the you know Krishna's service. At least this is what we're being told. Doesn't matter if you wash mm. pots, but why can some people wash pots and others can only go to the altar? You know, do not everyone can just go. So still, there is like I feel like ah yeah, are they really serious about this philosophy? All service to Krishna is equal, but you know, apparently not. Uh, however, I feel like my intellectual capacities they were not. Uh, satisfied and engaged and this is something which is actually of primary concern for me because this philosophy uh, is what made me attracted to temple life not the washing pots be simple uh, be humble Hare Krishna 
do as you as I've told you that it's not something that attracted me that's something I've tolerated in order to be with other mm -hmm. devotees that mm -hmm. share the similar philosophy so I was uh, um I was not you know pumping myself up saying hey why I don't you know get more opportunity for this and that I realized that you know I have many flaws in myself a preacher is not just someone who uh, can recite verses and shlokas but uh, who who is able to live what he's preaching so um, I became sort of looking that maybe if I work outside, earn money, I have a bit more freedom and I ha don't have the feeling I'm just here for washing pots. Then when I was, actually, I had a call already with the airport, you know, you earn very well in in, in Switzerland. It uh, was a nice job offer. Uh, I talked with her and um, then I uh, a devotee came, Vishnumuti Prabhu. Uh, he, he's the founder, Acharya of Vanipedia. So um, he introduced his project and I was thinking, wow, this is this looks really nice. This could be a service. You know, I'm good with computers. This could be a service I take and I do one, one two hours a day, you know, or in, during the weekend. Um, but he was pushing me. Um, he was saying, why don't you join us? Why don't you, you know, become serious? And um, uh, there was also another devotee. He was talking to him, you know, like... Um, Push, pushing him come on give him a chance you know let him see what he can let's see what he can do and uh he invited me to mayapur so um i again i sort of you know was about to quit my krishna conscious career but somehow uh again i found something that maybe you know i can carry on and that was working in vanipedia so um uh, he invited me to Mayapur. I stayed there. I did service for two months. A very, it was, uh, let's say, uh, Vishnumurti is a 24 7 guy. He has no weekend. He has mm. no uh, 12 hours a day. It's very normal for him and, uh, uh, and, and longer, you know. So I was, I was staying Prabhu six hours, five, six hours is enough for me, you know. I, I, then I want to chant, I want to go around and see. And I want a day off also, but you know we had a nice relationship. Um, I was responsible for the German translation in Vanipedia. We, we we were going through the letters that Shri Prabhupada has written, and we translated around two thousand letters in wow in, together in as team. I think I did around five hundred from them, but. Uh, uh, yeah, later it became a bit of a lower quality, I say, because in the beginning I was still mm. typing everything by hand, translating, and later we found a pretty good translator that we used to um, go through it very quickly. But I can tell you, I I know more from what I have written uh, personally, you know, um, it was a good way to dive into Srila Prabhupada's dealings, you know, how he actually... Uh, deals with people not just how, how he writes law in books that you know uh, are irreproachable that uh, are are cannot you know the human factor is missing but in the personal dealings uh, probably with disciples it's not so uh, it was a very nice experience for me then I after one year um, I joined the ashram there uh, the Aradash ashram I was very uh, pretty happy with that and I stayed there for two more years, and then I had the feeling, you know, maybe maybe working, maybe maybe making money and being independent is after all something I want to do. And uh, I I was working then in the restaurant a bit for, for in Radesh, and um, uh, actually um, in the beginning I thought they may not not quite fair with me. They gave me four hundred euro a month for a full time job, but they also gave me very nice accommodation. Uh, I I go I could eat whatever I want. So in the end, if you compare it with living mm -hmm. normally outside, having having to pay rent, you know, having to buy food, they actually were pretty mm. uh, pretty that, much. That actually sounds quite reasonable. If you've got free yeah. accommodation and yes. free prashadam, you yes. know, four hundred euros a month is not bad. 
It is true. Yes, yeah, all your true. expenses are paid for. Though, though it was something that, uh, and which is something I really, really um, remarked on on them as you know, take care of it. Um, I had no legal contract, and no legal contract means if you have an accident in the kitchen, what the hell are you doing there? You are not employed there. You know, the mm -hmm. the insurance will not pay. And so this is something um, I told them when I left. Please, please, please. Uh, because they have done it for quite a while, I had to do it. You know, the restaurant is not profitable for the community if um, if the uh, servants of the restaurant, you know, are not doing voluntary service because the restaurant is a place to help the community. And it is perfectly, mm -hmm. you know, from law-wise, it's a bit black. It is a bit dark. You know, we will get problems if something happens. And I made that clear to them. Uh, that they should change it and the thing that uh, made me happy is it did change with the next person because they had a similar problem again and uh, one of my good friends who's now working there in the restaurant he got a legal contract because he could not have stayed in uh, in the community with uh, because his he was married uh, to his wife um that where is not allowed to stay in the country if the husband cannot show that he has a minimum income, you know. Right. Um, mm. So I was happy that Krishna pushed them in this way, that that it, it was really, it was coming from me, it was coming from the net, next person they needed. This is some, uh, if we want business, if we make, and we need to have business, we need to make legal clean money not just live on donations mm. of mm. others it's very important we establish an economy that economy has to be established on a fair basis where you know it's not about having money 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 but it's how it's about becoming insured uh being able to get a pension because when you are in old age you don't have a guarantee iscon will take care of you you don't and there are many cases where uh amazing great preachers like recently we just had Amok Lila Prabhu who was a little maybe a little careless how to explain something but definitely gave it the way Shri Prabhupada gave it and you know many Hindus they uh, like to give donation they like to pay they like to support it's a pious nice project promoting our culture but uh, we, we don't agree with the likes of Vivekananda who eat meat and have a complete different philosophy. But the Hindus do. That's part of their culture. So is Krishna consciousness. And you see if the temple starts depending too much on these donations from um, people who are not convinced that Krishna is the supreme personality of God and everyone else is his servant, we have serious compromises. And this can lead to, you know, an amazing preacher being exiled because he spoke truth and that is a that is something that made me that was one of the key problems i saw in myself if you open your mouth and if you ask questions that you know don't like to be asked don't like to be heard you are in a dangerous position and if you are a brahmachari if you are sannyas you are dependent on your maintenance on your food on your mm. shelter on this, how can you preach boldly? How can you be truthful if you, if the temple cannot, you know, understand its uh, duty of maintaining the renounced ashrams? Mm. So, and, and actually, it's it can be quite a dangerous position to be in for for a brahmachari, for a sannyasi. That actually, you can't really say what you think. You can't really do what you want to do, you know, within reason, because you're afraid that the institution will disagree with you and kick you out or make you homeless. Um, mm. You know, there are, there are just certain ways of dealing with things. I mean, I know a number of sannyasis in ISKCON who actually have um, views that they keep private because they don't say it publicly because they're afraid of what the institution of ISKCON will say. One example, in my opinion, this is not a very controversial example at all, is mixing with other mats. Mm. Whereas privately, and quite a few sannyasis think it's fine. And actually privately, they go to other mats and they visit their temples. But actually we don't tell anybody because it's not allowed or there's some old rule in ISKCON from the 1990s, from Naraya Maharaj's days, and the rules mm. is still in place. So... You know, so I agree with you on on that one. Um, 
what I've found, what I've loved over the last 20 minutes is you've given us a bit of a whistle stop tour of all the projects that you've visited, ISCON projects. You know, I didn't, I wasn't aware over the last maybe seven, eight years you had been to so many. I mean, you've been in the UK, you've been in Belgium, you've been um, in Switzerland, um, Germany, um, Mayapur, you know, and you've really kind of surrendered to some extent, you know, you've just kind of given up stuff and said, right, I'm just going to go for it. You know, life, life's for living mm. let's kind of make the most of it um so my question to you is why have you been so passionate about and and enthusiastic about supporting iscon projects and diversity association what is it about those projects and the community of iscon that you love so much uh well i mean of course i'm i'm by nature very critical minded <laughs> I, I I am critical. I I understand this. I see this. I don't think it is a necessarily an issue if you speak about improving uh, social um, social structures or even economic structures, which are part of a functioning society, which is part of the dharma that our founder Charity Prabhupada has given us, that we establish a running society where the members can feel sheltered, protected, and uh, being being uh, provided with the help and facilities and tools to perform devotional uh, worship well to be honest my uh, main inspiration is of course god you know i want to get to know him i want to uh, i want to have a relationship with him and this is established through service it's a very simple uh Shri Prabhupada has stated so nicely the purpose of religion is to learn to know god and love him it's very it's a very nice thing and i think uh, god is very lovable if you are uh, you know the sages them for many thousands of years try to find him in the core of their heart and uh, it takes a long time for them because krishna uh, he wants to he wants to love he wants to service he does not like to just be it's of course nice to meditate on him, but to do something, to understand his will and uh, to to do something to help God because he's so full of compassion. He suffers for our ignorance. That is something that drives me, that uh, it is possible to share this gift with other living entities. You know, it's not just about finishing your your journey through 8.4 million species of life, uh, uh, sometimes a demigod, sometimes an insignificant end. That is, of course, very, if you uh, look for it from an intellectual viewpoint, yes, it is a, it's a really big uh, drive for people to become spiritual because the house is on fire. We need to get out. But um, Bhakti Devi, she does not take shelter in such a mentality. It's just the beginning. Uh, the heart has to become soft from loving emotions uh, towards the Supreme Lord, towards all living entities, because uh, we have to learn to see the Lord present in the hearts of others. And um, I think a movement uh, that uh, has the ambition to uh, understand the will of God and to spread the love, you know, the fruit of this uh, intense worship um that is a very unique special gift that is being given to us mm. Mm. that sounds wonderful actually i'm feeling very you've made me feel enthusiastic about krishna consciousness again um <laughs> no, i i am enthusiastic anyway but i just i just love that very clear explanation and you know i wish i i i I, I can't now I've got kind of other commitments, but I wish at the point when I could have that I'd made more time like you and just basically gave things up or surrendered and just spent that time traveling. I mean, all the all the all of the Godia temples I visited, not just this gone are wonderful spaces and places and great communities here in the UK. I've been to Radadesh where I where I saw you. I've been to a few temples in Spain. I've been to Paris. I've been to a, another temple in Rouen in France recently. And I just love being with devotees. You know, I love being with like minded people. We 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 follow we try and follow the same theology, philosophy, belief system, you know, practical things like we don't eat meat. Um, you know, we we try and 
come at things from a, from a servant attitude, you know, just to try and serve and not, not get anything in return, mm. you know, and actually, I, Sorry for this, interrupting you, but I, I understand this is um, Krishna actually said to give up the desire for the fruit of the, it doesn't mean it does not produce a fruit, mm. but we want to taste that fruit now. And that is a little tricky, you know, but yeah. there is a fruit. There definitely is a fruit. It's just. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. There is a, um, I try not to use this word enjoyment because we're not meant to enjoy, but there is this enjoyment or this pleasure in service. There is this spiritual fulfillment in service, in savor. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but why not enjoy? I think it's about um, the material body is a, is a false body. It's not your spiritual identity. Mm. So you are feeding desires or you want to enjoy the, um with your senses that are not essentially you. So this is a false enjoyment. I, I never recognized Prabhupada saying, um, I mean, of course, sometimes he used to say, we're not enjoyers, Krishna is the only enjoyer. Then on other parts, you know, this introduction of the Krishna book, uh, what does George Harrison write? You know, we all we need is love. You know, we want, love is, um, I think this is also something that, um, Coming, coming back to my, I, I studied quite a few Puranas, uh, not just the Srimad Bhagavatam. And this uh, thing about family affection, you know, without affection for family members, we would not bear the burden of, you know, um, serving them when there, when there is need. And uh, I think through um, uh, Dharma, you know, love becomes visible when you see that even if the body is not so pretty anymore, even if you are becoming sick, that person that is with you, will 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 she stay with you? Will he stay with you? Will he, he keep serving, you know? And Krishna, he tests his devotees similarly. If the intent is is pure, that um, uh, he wants love, honest love. You know, he's giving honest love and he wants to receive honest love. Even the gopis, you know, you, you, you know this uh, in Pastor Shri Bhagavatam, when uh, Krishna left the Ras, the Ras dance, and the gopis were asking when they found Krishna again finally, um, what is love? You know, and they were also like, you know, this is part of the Rasa. They were say, they were remarking that Krishna, we have left everything for you, and still you, you have, you know, you, you disappeared from us. Why is our love not pure? That's they asked us, is our love, is this why you have? And then we, we you know, Krishna answered that their love, their worship is the highest, and he cannot repay them. God feels inadequate, unqualified to repay for this loving service they have rendered. You know, there is there, there is such enjoyment in such dealings, and this is our goal. You know, our goal is to have such pure honest relation it is difficult you cannot explain this by material uh, you can the material intelligence cannot grasp it unless you have a very simple heart you know that uh, um, love can be like this and uh, we have we are practicing something which in the condition states Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati mentions this it is a process of self-denial so you're denying yourself from this uh, material enjoyment, uh, you learn to understand that the senses, you know, uh, sometimes it, they're compared to snakes, you know, they can bite. And if they bite, you know, this is why we, we have the institution of, of marriage, you know. I think marriage is a very beautiful thing that you, you, you first of all learn that love means through good and bad times. You don't separate just because there is some trouble. This is, I think this is, um, even though we can speak a long time about how this practically is not possible anymore to have proper marriages so, so much. And, um, but the principle, the principle is very nice because, you know, with Krishna, you end an eternal relationship. Just imagine an eternal relationship. Krishna doesn't like breakups. Krishna doesn't like heart, pain, indecision, you know, uh, do, 
does he love me does he not krishna really wants to have this you know nectar from you uh, from from us but he also is prepared to give himself in return that is not a it's not a cheap thing like prabhupada says um i i also i i love i love it when you speak you're very um inspiring i th i find your story very inspiring and i say this uh, i said this to you before we bro started broadcasting and i i say i said this to some other guests particularly those that i don't know very well is that when i ask the question because i don't know you very well i'll be surprised by the answers and and i've i've loved just having this conversation with you because i'm learning so much about you and your background um and it really reminds me that when Prabhupada came to the west he did it for everybody Prabhupada wanted uh, the Krishna consciousness movement to be a house for the whole world, for, for, for all of us, those that wanted to be a part of that house or that family, for everyone, regardless of our anartas, regardless of our background, regardless of our, you know, um, things in life that, that tie us down. Um, so thank you for sharing some of the stuff that you've, you have. I, I really, really appreciated it. Um, I want to talk finally about your YouTube channel. Um, I've only kind of discovered it recently and I, and I love it. It's called the journey of self-discovery and you, you're doing really well in terms of sharing Krishna consciousness in kind of bite-sized chunks. <laughs> um, it reminds me that term bite-sized chunks reminds me of when I was, uh, doing my GCSEs. So th they're not called that in the UK anymore, but it was the exams for when you were 16 and you used to have these bite-sized revision guides, making mathematics easy. Oh, I used to hate it. And science and English are bite-sized revision guides. So I always think of school when people say bite-sized, but you've met you and you, but you're presenting Krishna consciousness back to yoga in kind of bite-sized chunks. So people can easily, um, or in a more easier way, understand it. Tell us a bit about your YouTube channel in terms of what inspired you to set it up? Why did you set it up? And, you know, um, why do you like internet preaching so much? Yes. So, um, yeah, I started the YouTube channel, uh, I think it was last year in summer. Um, I always wanted to have a YouTube channel. Uh, I, I used to play a lot of video games. You know, I wanted to have a gaming. <laughs> yes, uh, I wanted to have a gaming channel. But uh, let's say, fortunately, my talents uh, I could use in in different ways. You know, I, I this this was actually something of the big things I asked. What service should I do? What can I do? You know, and the reason I called the channel Journey of Self Discovery, I made a minus KC Krishna consciousness because there are so many preachers who say Journey of Self Discovery right here. But no. Ours is with Krishna. I do not like to hide Krishna. I want to make people see this is Krishna. He's, he speaks Bhagavad Gita. He says he's the supreme personality of Godhead. I mean, Prabhupada used to preach like this. Why should I not try? Even if I have not seen him face to face, even if I do not know for sure that Krishna is God, I think the philosophy Krishna gives in Bhagavad Gita, the philosophy of Srimad Bhagavatam, itself convinces me sufficiently that this is uh, something that needs to be um, that needs to be tried, you know, that uh, uh, I, I think I lost Dharma, I lost Dharma in, in, this, in this world, you know, clean, cleanliness, mercy, mercy is a big thing, you know, not eating meat, being merciful to others. Otherwise, you cannot find God in your heart if you are not merciful to others. You're not merciful to him. So how would he be merciful to you? Truthfulness, it's essential. I call it journey of self-discovery because I think I am not self-realized. I'm not complete, but I am on a journey. I want to take others with me on that journey. So, you know, yes, um, you have to, like, you have to take a little gamble. Maybe Krishna is not the absolute truth. Maybe, um, you know, there's doubt in our heart. A true guru can dispel this doubt. He can clear this doubt. And um, why? Because he is pure. So journey of self-discovery, the purpose is for myself to become pure, purified. 
maybe I will rename the channel one day when I have attained Samadhi, who knows? <laughs> but um, yeah, so uh, as you say, giving chunks, I really, you know, I see my own struggles. I see my own mind. It is not able to grasp. I cannot sit down for three, four, five hours and just study and just, you know, read and uh, or just chant you know i need mm. engagement i need to see colors i need to hear sounds i need to hear a story and uh, interestingly also vyasadev compiled the mahabharat um that we have a, a story to hear where we can also learn about dharma because you know if you want to enjoy life be sure you need dharma without dharma you will suffer both in this world and the next so um that is something that, you know, the human uh, species in this age of Kali has lost its touch with Dharma. It does not understand why we need. It's not just about don't do this or don't do that. It's about developing compassion, developing austerity to do your duty. Uh, because if you don't do your duty, others who depend on you, they will suffer, you know. Uh, being truthful, we are living in a world full of cheaters. You, I can tell you something straight in the face, and you can't can't be sure that I'm lying. I, you know, you have to doubt. So, this is um, uh, this is something that is of actual value for the human form because you know you will have better relationships if you are having this such qualities. You know, but more enjoyment actually and. It's something that's a little, let's say, for, for those who are too much afflicted by uh, the material body that, you know, they don't even develop a desire to understand their spiritual bliss. They don't have a chance to give up sense enjoyment at all. And even if you are, uh, there is a verse, Balavan Indriyan Gramovid Vamsam Apikarsati that says that the senses are so strong, even a man of learning is struggling. Mm. So, um, as I, I, I mentioned to you before, also before we recorded, that what Shira Prabhupada asks us, he wants us to become superior to the demigods because the demigods are attached to sex life. It is something completely normal for them. Uh, and the demigods are much more advanced in understanding Dharma and understanding what is goodness. But so um, that a renunciant uh, sits proudly on the Vyasa sun dictating uh, others to renounce for the sake of renunciation is actually a sign that he has not understood uh, essential bhakti yet. He's actually still trying to figure out what is actually, what is maya and what is spirit, you know. So um, in Bhagavad Gita, um, uh, I, read, uh, I read a commentary of Srila Baladev Vidya Bhushan. So, um, He's a renowned acharya in our line, and he uh, says that unless a practitioner understands both matter and spirit in its nature, his renunciation is not mature. It cannot be mature because you need to understand the difference between lust and love in order to pick the better, in order to renounce the lower. And you know, um, it is it is something that unfortunately hunts renunciants to be envious of those who enjoy themselves freely without restriction. Even um, there's one pastime of Durvasa Muni, you know, famous Muni that we read a lot about who uh, has the tendency to get quickly angry, which is not always to his better, but he's a Brahmana. He is austere. You know, he has Shakti. He has power. His words become true because he speaks always truthfully. So uh, he once went into a cave, you know, for the sake of meditation. And, you know, he heard certain sounds that you uh, hear when two people enjoy themselves. And he did not like it at all. He became very angry. He cursed them. And, you know, um, I was, when I really like, wow, wow, is this what a sadhu should do? You know, uh, you, you, do, you don't mind your, your business. You're somewhere enjoying yourself. And then suddenly there's a, there's a renunciant who cannot tolerate that you're enjoying yourself. So, um, and you know, his reaction was, he, he went out of the cave and immediately desired to marry. He, he fell down actually, because he could not restrain his anger. So uh, 
he uh, explained how how a sage has so much power by his austerity. <laughs> a king went went uh, as soon as he had his desire. A king was just about you know traveling the world, trying to find a suitable husband for his daughter, and just see there uh, the, the great sage Duvasa Muni is here. So he paid his back and says, said, uh, Maharaj, do you want to marry my daughter? <laughs> and uh, Duvasa Muni agreed. So this is actually um, the envy has many faces. For renunciates uh, who have not matured, you know, who have not seen that there is a serious difference with this Maya, you know, by its nature, not by, not that it's temporary. We don't care that it's temporary. The nature, the nature itself is not pure, but there is a pure nature. And if we become attached, attracted to that nature, that can purify even our sinful heart. You know, this Ishupanishad has a, the explanation that Krishna, like the sun, can extract the the water even from the urine so powerful that something so impure as urine becomes purified by being uh, subject to the sunlight so similarly uh, if we become mature in our practice um, we, we we can see that uh, there is no way we can hatefully resentfully reject maya she will come. You know, Haridas Thakur pastime, she came and she, uh, Haridas Thakur did not say, go away, devil, go away, woman. He said, be patient, wait, I will fulfill your desire. Let me finish my rounds. Let me chant. And Maya Devi herself became purified by that chanting. So this is something, you know, uh, renunciation is nice and, and good but what if a beautiful young lady approaches us in the middle of the night and no one sees? This is Maya's test. This is, Maya's test is not how long can you remain celibate, how long can you restrain your, your senses, because even great moonies, they fall prey to, uh, to the desire for sex. So this is, it's not something that is uh, a small thing. It is something that requires um, uh, spiritual nourishment and in the end Krishna actually has to protect you from Maya that you don't fall you cannot be puffed up and hate you know being free from hate and love you know so-called love towards this world also Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that is essential for the Muni for one who is intelligent otherwise our uh, and that is let's say I'm speaking with this, my friend. We have lots of talks about this. You know, he's also coming from a little bit from another Gaudiya Math project, um, but if also feels attracted to ISKCON, that if we are just focused on external renunciation, we are, first of all, enforcing a, a standard of morality and ethics that surpasses that of the demigods. I mean, if we can become a society like demigods, we would already change the world in, into a, a different sphere. Um, but if we become, if we are expected Kali Yugi people who have no knowledge about Dharma, you know, to become a perfect renunciate, you know, and this is expected, this is actually something that is really harmful to the movement and to the natural growth. It will lead to many misunderstandings and then, of course, the big fall downs of people who taught themselves renounced but are actually not mature. That will weaken the faith of many followers who cannot, who thought this is the practical example of spiritual life. This is Guru and he fell down. A Guru does not fell down. A true Guru cannot fall down. As he's not a guru if he falls down. He's, you know, he can be a practitioner. He can be, uh, he can be a madhyam adhikari who is very advanced, uh, worshipable even. Still, he can fall down, and that is not the type of guru that can guide us um, to the supreme destination. So our ideals, our focus, should always be to find shelter in those sages who. Um, have come to this world to teach us 
uh, and you know um, you cannot just learn from their external examples you sometimes just have to fall in love with them like how many disciples fall in love with Srila Prabhupada and just said anything he said because they loved him and it was possible for them because he was there he had he, it was not just a philosophy. There was a loving in this ocean where no one really cares for you, where where um, love does actually not truly really exist. He gave a light of hope. The guru is, then becomes something very beautiful that, you know, the first person you can actually unrestrictedly fall in love with because there are no ulterior motives there is no intention to exploit you for sense enjoyment but simply the understanding uh, here is a part and parcel of krishna and my duty as guru is to deliver my disciple to krishna consciousness to make him a fit associate for the supreme lord and that is that is powerful so your youtube channel kind of goes into some of this and talks about some of this i mean the, the clips that i have any had a chance to see a few clips but some of the clips i've seen are very inspiring and and they're very powerful as well you you have a very positive and impactful style of of preaching or sharing krishna conscious like like what you're doing now during this podcast you're sharing these kind of bite-sized chunks that are just there and and i love how you kind of remember sastra much better than i than i could and i love how you're just kind of presenting it um, I mean, do you do you read a lot in terms of in terms of, you know, your YouTube channel and your preaching? How, how do you where do you get your where do you get your fuel from? You know, in terms of are you reading on a regular basis to to um, in, in order to be able to preach like you are? Uh, I do read regularly. Yes. Um, now, that since I'm working full time, I actually don't always have the time and energy to read as much. Um, but I try to read at, at least 15 minutes to half an hour a day. Um, most I learned, of course, in my stays in temple. I used my time in the temple for reading. Mm. Um, so I got a little bit of basic knowledge um, from from living in the temple and reading there. But um, if I would name you my greatest source of inspiration, I would say it's actually Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakura and Srila Bhakti Thakura because they made Krishna consciousness um, uh, approachable for for our culture. You know, they um, uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati especially. Uh, I know many people struggle to study his writings, like the you know Brahma Samhita. I love it. I read it, and this is just it's poet. It's poetry. It's it's genius. Uh, I, I don't claim I understand everything what he says, but someone who has such a superior intelligence, who completely dedicated his life uh, to he his he he just incarnated. He just came to this world to spread the mission from from day one. How can a how can a baby a child have this determination to serve God? It's incredible. So. Uh, I do take actually a lot of inspiration. Um, you know, Facebook is actually a very nice platform for me to read such chunks also by myself because there are uh, a few senior Vaishnavas, Prabhupada disciples. They also enjoy sharing these nectar drops. You know, we mm. we had also in Vanipedia, we used to cut some t uh, parts of Prabhupada's lecture and put them into a nectar drop. So people can just have uh, one minute, they read something. Um Smaranam, remembrance. You don't need, you can be engaged in your work. You can focus even. Boop, something pops up in your mind. You become distracted, but you become distracted to Krishna. Like, you know, when you have a lover, you always think of, of that person. It's not, even if you have to focus and concentrate and work, it just pops. And so... um yeah, um, now at the moment I'm reading the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, which is actually uh, commentated by Sanatan Goswami. Uh, I really like to um, go to the teachings of the six Goswamis. You know, they are Hila Prabhupada. You will see in his purports, he Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashatya Deshatarni, he came to defeat the Mayavadis, the impersonalists, and the voidist. So we will find that 80% sometimes of the purports are 
um, focused on our misguided civilization mm. and on uh, our misguided philosophy. And I find it hard to swallow because I don't, I don't even, you know, uh, impersonal philosophy. Uh, if you're just sp speaking about establishing truth, what does it lead you to? It does not lead you to an eternal loving relationship with a perfect person. It leads you to maximum a cessation of all suffering, feeling you have become one with God. So I do not, I cannot identify myself with that goal. You know, God is so great. He's a desire tree. He fulfills all desires. If you want to become God, you can merge in his body. You know, there are two types of impersonal liberation. That one is that the uh, Brahmavari seek, you know, to merge with the Brahma Jyoti, but there is even to merge with Krishna's body. And this is something that Chishupal, for example, has attained. Uh, when Krishna killed him, he merged with Krishna's body. Uh, everyone saw it. And for a devotee, this is horrible because it is like committing suicide. You become one with God. You are so envious of God that you cannot remain a separate person. And he fulfills. You know, we don't know what happens after you merge with God. Maybe you will come out again. You know, <laughs> who knows what, what God can do. But uh, I think, uh, you know, when going to the um, writings of the Goswamis, Bhakti Thakura, they also speak about Mayavad philosophy and misguided society, but very minute because they already focus on the essence. So mm. sometimes I feel like, you know, Prabhupada, uh, when you, you know, we call, we, we speak about the Bhakti Lata Beach. It's a creeper of devotional service. Before you plant a creeper anywhere, there is rough work to be done because you have to prepare the land. And to prepare the land, you know, uh, I don't know if you have ever witnessed, I was actually um, also um, as part of the garden project in Radadesh, uh, engaged in preparing the ground. It's super hard work. It's dirty. It's ungrateful because you don't produce any fruits, but you have to do it. And similarly, these purpose of Prabhupada, they prepare us to accept the right philosophical conclusion to go further into the studies of um yeah, of the six Goswamis. You know, Gaudiya Mat, they, they, they study the same teachings of the six Goswamis and we stick to Prabhupada. I'm I'm a Prabhupada man myself. I I I I have no intention to uh you know step over Prabhupada's head or something like that. I read all the books Prabhupada has written, like the Chaitanya Charitamrita, the Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavad Gita and then I went further and I felt that many uh, things that I would say hamper the progress of of ISKCON they can be solved by consulting uh, the scriptures of the you know previous Acharyas and also to develop a certain softness that um, uh, we don't you know when when we see someone who is in the lower mood of nature if we associate with them, there is a danger we become contaminated. Uh, it is a danger we um, uh, may may lose our spiritual value if we are not strong ourselves in having these commitments. Um, but, you know, this type of mentality can be very exclusive to others, that they don't feel like they can be part of, of this. And, and Krishna consciousness is, is very much, you know, it's not someone going behind your back and pushing, 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 is someone who is in a better position, reaches down a hand to you and pulls you up, you know, this, it's not a pushing thing, it's a pulling thing, and ISKCON needs these leaders that are able to um, uh, just be affectionate and kind, like, like human people should be, and that's, uh, uh, that will be very helpful, so in my, on my channel, um, what, one of my projects I intend to do is to travel to ISKCON projects, not just ISKCON, also I like to visit some Goryamat projects. I think they do very nice service there and just show the people how we live or how we should live. How is it possible in this modern world, in this modern time to live a spiritual life? That is of great interest to me. And um, yes, I would like to travel a little bit, share it. I'm not really sure what I will do in my life, you know, which path I will take. But 
um you know i i always see i i see my own shortcomings i know my anartas god uh knows everything he sees everything i cannot cheat him so before i uh think about becoming a preacher i first of all want to become um yeah myself uh, a transparent via media not someone who has to cheat and trick people uh, making a light a light living because now i work i work hard like a donkey to uh, to get you know uh, 10 hours a day i'm i i am i'm busy working at the moment it's a bit crazy in my in my place uh, they have a lot to do but i prefer this type of lifestyle um towards this honest living in a temple which i did lead before unfortunately uh, and i feel that um my relationship with krishna has so much improved because I admitted to myself that uh, I am I, I cannot present the ideal example of a preacher, but I can still share what I know, what I uh, what I read, and um, what I apply also to myself, what I have realized uh, that helps me in my life. So, yeah, that is a. Um, I think I think the channel helps me to document my mm. own progress in spiritual life also mm. Mm. it's fantastic and certainly with this podcast i will put a link to your youtube channel so people can um um see it and have a look at some of the fantastic films that you've produced um also actually i have to say it was like music to my ears you saying that you were very inspired by shula bhakti siddhanta saraswati takor um uh, I uh, a couple of years ago, I wrote a book about the history and diversity of the Hare Krishna movement in Britain. And when I started my research initially, I thought, well, I'm going to use Srila Prabhupada. AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada is my is my my pinpoint, uh, and I will I will I will um, everything will work around him. But I soon realised that I I need to go back further one generation. Uh, so I, in terms of understanding the diversity of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, I went back to Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur in, in terms of identifying all of his disciples and the mats that they set up and their preaching projects. I probably could have gone back further as well. Um, but I just, I, 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 yeah, in terms of Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, his impact on the world has been huge. Um, you know, he's referred to as the lion guru just fiercely preaching you know he didn't care whether he offended people or, or what people thought about him he was following um the teachings of you know, he was following the example of of his guru and his guru before him and he was passionate about uh, aggressively passionate actually about just sharing krishna consciousness and defeating you know maya bodies and 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 telling people that they're in maya and and you look at therefore um, a lot of the uh, disciple, or a lot of the disciples of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Srila Prabhupada's one of them. They were all very. They all adopted that kind of lion-like attitude, that kind of military-like attitude to just preaching, preaching, preaching. You know, and I wish I was more like that. You know, I wish I would just give up my creature comforts and just preach. Don't worry about where I'm going to sleep or how I'm going to earn money or what I'm going to eat. Just do it. So, yeah, I, I really love that you said that. Um, and, and actually, you made a good point in terms of, you know, maybe I hadn't really thought about it. Maybe ISKCON doesn't, as much as it could, encourage its members to read the books of Bhaktivedanta Thakur and Srila Bhakti Santa Sarasati Thakur. You know, obviously, there's Brahma Samhita, which I've read, but I'm, I'm, I know there's other books and other publications too. And, um, yeah, it would be good if ISKCON encouraged its members to read other publications as well. Um, uh, Murali Dara Prabhu, believe it or not, we've been recording for about an hour and a half. It's been it's been an amazing conversation, um, and I'm certainly looking forward to keeping in touch with you and and keeping updated with what ISKCON projects and other projects your your um you're visiting i mean you're you're guest number 92 but i've certainly oh you're certainly the fifth or sixth guest from germany i've spoke to over the last three years um on of which actually at least three of them i can think of now are not um they're all very different you're all di we're all different but at least two of them are from different mats from each other and i interviewed param shreya a while ago 
he, he runs he, he's kind of independent Krishna West so to speak so Germany is quite diverse in terms of Gaudiya Vaishnavism and even within Germany you know um if she's listening to this I'm sorry I've forgotten her name but I interviewed one lady about two years ago who was a disciple of Sadhanananda Swami so Sadhanananda Swami was the German godbrother of Prabhupada who was a sannyasi um, so uh, there is a, a small following of his in Germany as well, which I've written about a little bit. But um, so, yeah, I'm just kind of encouraging you in your in your in your work. And um, I'm looking forward to and I love the fact that you've got this approach to exploring diversity, exploring diversity. <laughs> um, yeah, that's fantastic. So I think um, I'm going to say goodbye to the viewers at home. And then you and I can have a brief debrief after <laughs> by, about the podcast. So a big thank you to Morali Dara Prabhu for being our 92nd guest on the Harry Krishna Project podcast. Um, um, just a reminder, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do not forget to hit the all important subscribe button. Uh, and thank you to everyone who is, by the way. So when I say this actually does work, I see the number of subscribers go up whenever I say this, uh, hit the subscribe button to keep updated about future podcasts. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, like, or follow the Harry Christian project page, uh, we've got some big, I always say this, but we have some more big podcasts coming up soon. Uh, and actually another world exclusive soon, which I, I can't even talk about because it's so exclusive and so top confidential. Um, so <laughs> I might tell Morali Dara Prabhu after we stop recording what it's about. Uh, he, he's keen to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got such a big mouth. So uh, a big thank you to Morali Dara Prabhu. And until next week, we'll see you all soon. Thank you. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna Prabhu. Thank Hare you. Bo.